What's up guys, my name is Sean, welcome to my tech channel. Today we are checking out the GK61 RGB mechanical gaming keyboard with hot swappable Gateron optical switches. They come in two different colors, you can get them in black and white. And as far as the optical switches, you can get them in black, blue, brown, red, silver, and yellow. And this model here that I have are the red optical switches. The folks at banggood.com hooked me up with this keyboard. They send this unit to me for free to review. I'm not being paid to review this. So as always, I'm gonna give you my honest and unbiased opinion. But also they are hooking you up with some uh, discount if you wanna go ahead buy this keyboard or anything else from their website. Um, there's a $5 off coupon code that I'll have down in the description below. Also, if you download their app, you also get 10% off. Now, besides the keyboard, there is a ton that you can actually find on their website. If you're looking for 4K action cameras, you're looking for phones, you're looking for drones, there are really good deals. These are uh, being shipped from China. The shipping is typically about 10 to 15 days and the shipping cost is not that bad. I think this uh, is only about five bucks to get it shipped to Maryland, US. There is a lot that we have to go ahead and uncover here, but I'm gonna talk about the design. We're gonna work our way from the outside and then go inside and talk about some of the features and options that this keyboard is giving us. Uh, so what you do get in the box is the keyboard itself. It comes with a USB type A to USB type C cable. You get a very, very, very useful owner's manual and shortcut that uh, you do have English language on it as well. You have a key puller and a switch puller. Like I said, these are hot swappable switches, so you can take them out and switch them with different switches. However, you can only switch them with other Gateron optical switches. So you do have a limited selection, but even within those uh, switches I named earlier, your yellow, silver, red, brown, blue, and black, you do have a nice variety of different uh, styles such as linear, tactile with different actuation points and pressure points that you need to get. So um, that part is not that bad. Now talking about some of um, these uh, key pullers that you have, personally, I'm not a big fan of these uh, key pullers. Um, I think they can scratch your keycaps a little bit. I like these kind of like wire styles a little bit better. You can go ahead, hook these underneath your keys and then pull them right out. And I think they're much easier and they're less likely to damage your keycaps. Uh, there are no buttons around the keyboard. Uh, you only have your USB Type-C port in the back. At the bottom, you have these four rubber feet that they actually do work very well. Uh, one of the downsides is this does not have adjustable legs, so this is the only angle it can type in. Now, personally, I had no problem with this angle, but if you're someone that you would like a little bit more flexibility, you're not gonna be able to adjust this. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. This weighs uh, about 0.8 uh, kilograms or about 1.75 pounds. So it has a good bit of a weight to it. Uh, the body, while it's plastic, it definitely looks and feels premium. It does not seem like a light keyboard. The keycaps are double shot ABS. Now, typically most keyboards in this price range they will have this type of uh, construction and material. Uh, if you want to get something nicer, typically you're looking at PBT uh, keys. So this is how the keys will look like. Now, just a quick teaser. I also went ahead and picked up these uh, clear uh, keycaps that later on I'm gonna go ahead trying to install and see how it will look so we can let some of that RGB lighting to shine through. This is IP68 waterproof, so that is really good uh, thanks to having optical switches. The way optical switches work are pretty cool. So typically in mechanical keys and switches, uh, when you push down the key, it would uh, actually connect the two pieces of uh, the wires and connectors, and that's how it would actuate and will send a signal that that key is pressed. With the optical switches, when you press down on the key, it actually, uh, a, a piece of the switch at the bottom will go down and interrupt the uh, flow of um, uh, the light between two small sensors. And the moment that key is pressed and reaches and crosses that beam, 
and that will be actuated. Um, the board right underneath is white and uh, I think it goes really nice with these keycaps. Now a couple of things to keep in mind, the sides of these keycaps are a little bit shiny. That would actually help for the RGB lighting to shine uh, and show a little bit more because it would reflect on the side of these keys and then you can see the lights a little bit better. So if you notice uh, some of the larger keys that they have uh, stabilizers, um, the sound is damper and much nicer and some of the other keys such as the control alt function and things like that, they actually uh, have a bit of a hollow and tin can sound. And this is the shift key. So it depends on you know, what's your style, what do you look for, uh, just something to keep in mind. Now, while I said I don't like this one. This is actually useful for taking some of the larger keys out because you really can use this one to take a space bar out. So I got to tell you, one of the things that's actually fairly impressive is the quality of the stabilizers they have used in, um, in this keyboard. And that is fairly impressive. There is a small opening at the bottom of the switch. When you press this, there is a small uh, piece that will come through and block the light down here. And if you look in here, right in the middle of where the switch is, there is an opening and there is a hole. And when you push down on this key, this piece at the bottom will go down through that hole and would actually stop the light between the two sensors and it won't let it cross. And that's how it will get actuated. I, I just raised the legs a little bit so you guys can see the lighting pattern. So one thing you want to keep in mind is not to lose this uh, quick guide or owner's manual. This has all the shortcuts you need to know exactly how you can uh, go ahead, change the different patterns, speed, brightness, and turn the RGB on and off. For example, most of the stuff is controlled with the function button. So if you hold down the function and hit backspace, you can actually turn the lights off and then turn it back on again. Uh, you can go ahead, change uh, its brightness. With um, P, you would lower the brightness, and with open um, brackets, you would increase the brightness. Uh, the lighting patterns are divided into two categories. One are the reactive ones and one are the pre-programmed patterns that you have. So for example, this rainbow, that's one of the uh, pre-programmed pattern. And then uh, you have this option, you have this, 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 and this. One thing I will tell you, and the ones that has solid color like this, I wasn't able to figure out, see how I can actually change the color from the keyboard. So um, if anybody has used this before and know how to go ahead and change the color, please comment down below and let us know. Uh, the other one are the reactive uh, um, color pattern and you can go ahead and hold on the function button and hit the, I can't read upside down, what is this, backspace. And you have Again, different reactive patterns. Now you're not seeing this correctly. There is there is an actual microphone inside. I think it's underneath the space bar 
that you can have this react to music. Come on, how cool is that? Look, this may be this may be more of a, a novelty feature, but I think the fact that you have this in a keyboard, it is really cool. What are some of the other features that it's important to know about this? Uh, you can actually have different layers of programming. So you have the standard mode, and then you can define three different uh, modes and layers. So you hold on the function button, and then from Q, W, E, and R, that's how you get into uh, different modes. Um, now, I was not able to go ahead trying to test those different layers because the driver that is available that would let you customize this is not available for Mac yet. It's only available for Windows and I couldn't go ahead trying to hook this up with a Mac. I will tell you based on some of the reviews I have read online, um, you definitely can customize and it has a lot of powerful macro features, especially for gaming. That will be really useful. But the downside of that software is it's not very user friendly and you have to play around with it and it may take a while to figure out, see exactly how it works. So now that we've talked about some of the features and seen, seen different lighting patterns, I want to go ahead, change um, the keycaps and try to put these clear caps on and see how the RGB lights will look on this thing. So I'm going to turn the lights back on real quick. All right. So this is a uh, crystal crown keycaps. They are in black. Uh, I think they have this both in transparent and translucent. These are the transparent ones. So uh, all the walls around it is basically transparent. That looks cool and I love the sound of it. All right, so I went ahead, finished and uh, putting out all the keys. I had to compromise and for the function, Key, I put another Windows key, but obviously I will know this corner button is going to help me to change some of uh, the controls and lighting and things like that. But what do you guys think? I, I actually think it came out really nice. It It's a shame to uh, kind of mask all that RGB uh, lighting. I think this uh, actually shines the light through really nicely. I still think the, 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 the fonts and the letters are very, very uh, uh, readable and they're very visible. And I personally really like it. So I think uh, this is going to be one of my go to keyboards. All right. So I do want to do a quick recap so we can understand what are some of the pros and cons. Uh, so one of the first pros, it has to be the switches. You're getting optical switches. They are hot swappable and you have several different options to choose from. Uh, these red switches I have, they have a, uh, a two millimeter um, uh, trigger point. Um, the stabilizers that they use are really, really nice. I think it does a really, really nice job to control the movement of these long keys as well as dampen the sound a little bit. While this is um, um, a plastic for the most part, it is overall very, very nice. And when you look at it, when you, when you use it, when you uh, touch it, it definitely feels like a premium keyboard and then the water resistant ip68 that is a huge plus and the final pro all in all together for this to be around 50 55 bucks i think that makes it a really exciting keyboard before i get to some of the cons i do want to do a quick audio test so you guys can see the difference that these keys can make in the sound that this uh, keyboard is producing So I think the sound that these keycaps make has a little bit deeper tone compared to the little bit of a hollow sound that the uh, OEM uh, keycaps make. But look, that's the beauty of getting a mechanical keyboard, especially if the switches are hot swappable. Uh, not only can change the switches, but it can also change the keycaps. 
Now let's talk about some of the cons, the things I don't like about this. Uh, the first one has to be the, the keycaps. I think they're way too shiny. Uh, I think it's not, the fonts are a little bit hard to read. I like a little bit more uh, thicker and bold fonts on my uh, keycaps. And these are double shot APS. As a result of that, some of the sound that these keys were making, they were a little bit too hollow, which I was not a big fan of. The next con for me has to be the driver. There is nothing available for Mac, so I was not able to try to do a deep dive and play around with some of the macros and different uh, RGB lighting that I could uh, create with this keyboard. And then finally, not having any tilt. Again, that may not be a big deal. Honestly, this is a very comfortable uh, typing angle for me, but if someone would like this to be raised a little bit, uh, the legs are fixed and you cannot tilt and raise these legs. All right guys, so this was the review of the GK61. I am not a keyboard enthusiast while I enjoy a good keyboard. Probably some of you guys that are watching this video, you're watching it because you are a keyboard enthusiast and you may even know a lot more about this keyboard than I do. So if there's anything I missed and you wanna share with the rest of the community, definitely drop a comment down in the description below. Don't forget the coupon code that is available if you want to buy uh, anything from uh, banggood.com website. So if there is anything I can do to try to improve the quality of my videos, definitely let me know. And by the way, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe and you enjoy tech content like this, please consider subscribing. And before you forget, give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.